One of the most common questions I get from patients who just start a GLP-1 medicine such as ZepBound or Wegovy is, when can I stop this medicine? Can I stop the medicine and keep the weight off? I wanna be abundantly clear. The data is very clear on this. Most people will regain most of their weight back once they stop a GLP-1 medicine. The analogy is similar to any other chronic disease type of medicine. Let's take hypertension, for example. When you have high blood pressure and you're doing all the lifestyle things you wanna to do to try to help it, DASH diet, whatever, low carb, it doesn't matter what it is, and you just can't lower your blood pressure. So the doctor says, okay, let's put you on a blood pressure medicine. Let's call it lisinopril or any other blood pressure medicine, and your blood pressure starts to normalize. It starts to go down. Let's say after six months, the doctor goes, all right, let's take you off the blood pressure medicine your blood pressure goes right back up. It's a very similar thing with GLP-1 medicine. The underlying pathophysiology of obesity is appetite dysregulation, at least one of the pathophysiologies of it. Yes, we are in a positive energy balance. Yes, it's a struggle with getting into a negative energy balance. That means eating fewer calories than we burn. This is where the dysregulated appetite comes into play. When you have a dysregulated appetite, it makes it very difficult to eat fewer calories than you burn over sustained periods of time. So the medicine comes in, hits the receptors in the brain that allows you to actually eat fewer calories than you burn. So when you stop the GLP-1 medicines, that dysregulated appetite comes back, you start eating more, you start regaining your weight. This has been tested multiple times in randomized controlled trials. What they do is they put everybody on the medicine. Let's take terzepatide, for example, that's Zepbound. Everybody goes on the Zepbound after like 36 weeks. One group is then randomized to a placebo and we start seeing that group start to regain their weight. Now, not everybody regains their weight completely, but most people do. Around 10 to 15% of people can keep the weight off after about a year. What we don't know is if those people continue to keep the weight off, but most people actually regain the weight rapidly. In fact, a new meta-analysis showed that most people will regain all their weight by the end of two years. So if there's a doctor out there saying, hey, Mrs. Smith, Looks like you went from a 35 BMI with a lot of excess body fat down to let's say a 23 BMI. Now that you are a normal weight according to the BMI, let's go ahead and take you off the medicine. Exactly the same thing with high blood pressure. It'd be like, oh wow, your blood pressure is high. Let's put you on the blood pressure medicine, put you into a normal range for the blood pressure, and then take you off the medicine. We don't talk about this for any other type of medicines. Of course, an individualized approach will be the best because some people, if they wanna to try to come off, we do the best we can. Not everybody has that dysregulated appetite that caused them to gain a lot of weight and not be able to lose it. In fact, a lot of patients actually gained a lot of weight during things like COVID, the pandemic. It disrupted their habits, it caused them to eat a lot more than they wanted to, gained a lot of weight, struggling to get back into the swing of things, and now they use a medicine to get the weight off, but they don't have that dysregulated appetite to where they come off the medicine and it causes them to rapidly regain their weight. Some of those people don't have that excess food noise, even just thinking about food, the hunger, the cravings. So they come off the medicine and they're able to actually maintain it. Again, these people are actually in the minority though. Most people will absolutely regain the weight when they stop the medicine. So if there is a doctor out there trying to claim that we should take you off the medicine once you reach a normal quote unquote weight, they're absolutely incorrect. They don't know the data and they may have a weight bias against people with obesity. The best approach in this scenario is either trying to educate that doctor or you have to go see another doctor. Of course, I would love for you to come see us at Vineyard, but honestly, I think most doctors are amenable to change and understanding it. You can bring them the meta-analysis. You can bring them the various randomized controlled trials to show them that, hey, obesity is a chronic disease. It requires chronic management with a chronic medicine. Another good example, if you wanna use the analogy, it would be like having lifelong high cholesterol and taking a statin medicine, which I know people don't necessarily like, I'll do more videos on that later, seeing the cholesterol go down and then saying, oh wow, your cholesterol is normal now, let's take you off the statin medicine. It will go right back up. Another good example would be having moderate depression. You put them on the medicine, their depression starts to improve, and it'd be like, all right, now that you're feeling better, let's take you off the medicine. Now, of course, it's multifactorial, just like obesity, just like hypertension, just like cholesterol. So in some instances, you can absolutely start weaning people off depending on their situation. But in general, chronic diseases require chronic therapy. 
Another thing to throw back at other people who are, let's say fitness people are starting to say, you should come off this medicine. It's just a band-aid. It's just to get things started. Even diet and exercise, if you use those to get in really good shape, if you don't continue to do the same things like exercise, you're going to lose the muscle that you just gained. People that take anabolic steroids or excess testosterone, if they stop doing that, they're going to lose the muscle that they got. This comes back to obesity being a chronic disease and people not understanding that concept and the pathophysiology behind the dysregulated appetite centers. And it also comes back to a weight bias. People want to believe that we can just willpower our way out of obesity. And again, some people are able to change their habits and not need a medicine, and that's great. But a lot of people actually will need the medicine. I'm Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, a triple board certified physician, family physician, obesity specialist, and lipid specialist physician. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to learn more about GLP-1 medicines and obesity medicine in general.